Today we're going to be going over one of the things that I see a lot of artists doing wrong, and we're going to try to cover a couple of things that I think people skip over that are really important. If you've looked for tutorials or information on how to be a better artist online, one of the things you've likely run into is they seem like they start at episode six. What I wanted to do today was go over some of the biggest things I see people making mistakes with, things that cost you time, things that cost you energy, and things that if you do them correctly, they're going to help you to make better work. So the basics are really important, so important that most of the times people gloss over them. We went through this period in our culture that we are witnessing the fruits of right now, an intense period of de-skilling where we didn't teach the basic skills. We have a generation of teachers who are afraid to say anything to students that might make them uncomfortable or might tell them that they're doing something wrong. That's because we've been essentially overwhelmed by subjectivism in art education. You don't have to worry about that with me. I'm here to teach you how to do things in a way that I think is effective and that I've had a lot of experience teaching people how to do that's improved their work. So without further ado, Let's begin. One of the things young artists do that drives me absolutely crazy is they don't know how to move their hand when they're drawing. It's really, really simple, folks. This is a piece of paper. You may have seen these before. They can go this way. They can go this way. They can rotate around 360 degrees. It's an amazing bit of technology right there. This is your wrist. There's a lot of important stuff that runs right through there. And it is not meant to be pinched or twisted or adjusted in a way that is going to put pressure on those. So stop doing it. You've got one or two lines that you can make. The biggest thing you have to practice is when you draw, how you're holding your hand and how you're moving your wrist. This is the mark that you are gonna be making and you're gonna be perfecting when you're a right-handed artist. It's gonna be moving across like this. That is your primary mark. What you will notice is I am not moving my fingers when I do that. That is the key to hand control is understanding that space right there. And once you master that angle, you're gonna be doing better and better work. Here's the biggest thing I run into. If you're a left-handed artist, that's not your mark. If you're a left-handed artist, the thing you have to think about is reversing things so that you can get the most out of it. So let me start with a couple of things that I might do as a left-handed artist. For one thing, I don't need that spiral right there that's keeping my sketchbook together. I don't need it on that side because it's gonna interrupt my hands flow. So I just flipped my sketch pad upside down because again, it rotates. Then I'm gonna take this pencil with my non-dominant hand. I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. First, I have to get used to it for a second because I'm not left-handed. And then out and away from myself. That is the mark that I'm trying to perfect. Now, one of the telltale signs that you're dealing with a left-handed artist is left-handed artists learn a lot of bad habits from writing. Because they have to write in this direction, often going over their work, you'll see a lot of left-handed artists really doing some terrible things to their wrist when they're drawing. What you have to do is figure out the best way to protect your wrist long-term, and that is by learning how to move it. When I see people doing lines, they do these lines that drive me crazy. I call it stutter sketching. Besides looking ridiculous, to get a to get the appearance of a graceful line, you have to make sure that you land those marks interconnected, but also it takes forever takes so much more time to do a stutter sketch line than to do the correct line. And so how often should you be practicing this and what kinds of things can you do? For starters, you need to pay attention every time your wrist turns. You should be turning the page. Every time you would want to do that. So start paying attention to what you're doing and making sure that you are keeping things in this particular position when you're working and turn your page. So here's another one just for you lefties out there. If you take a look at my setup, you'll see that I've got inks, brushes, water, paints, everything I do with media is over here, right over here, because I'm right-handed. So let me turn the sketchbook back around so that that spiral isn't there blocking my hand when I try to move it across. Make my marks here. If I'm painting, I reach right over here, conveniently located and then work. So that if I'm painting or if I'm doing anything like that, dip my brush in the water, move it over here. 
dip my brush in the water, move it over here. On the left side of your field of vision should be your reference, should be anything that you're going to be glancing over to check. But all of your materials should be over here. Now, if you're left-handed, it's the same thing. Turn your sketchbook around, and you're going to want to work like this, and you want to move your hand over here. I see too many left-handed people when they're working reaching across their work because they're looking at what their right-handed counterparts are doing. That's not good for your shoulder long-term. It's going to wear it out. And it's not good for your work to always be reaching around. I mean, if that's your thing, knock yourself out. But when you're reaching over here across your work all the time, it's an utter waste of energy. It's a waste of time. It's inefficient. Keep your materials over here. So if you're working, reach to your left, come back to your paper. Reach to your left, come back to your paper. There are a lot of fine motor movements that happen when you're drawing with your finger. And with a lot of practice, you can get a pretty straight line. But because of those movements, you're going to get wobble, you're going to get shake, and it's not worth it. Whereas this is all in here. This is locked. And then you've also got the paper supporting your wrist or whatever surface you're working on. You're always going to get a better line. So you practice this stuff over time and you'll be able to do things and get an understanding of what that space is. And since you're just mastering one particular movement, you're going to get that stronger. It's also going to help you to make more expressive work and have more energy in it. And all the great illustration comic book work has that expressive quality. And you can't do it making stingy, short lines. It's not going to work. There's no power in that. Use your arm. And the more practice you get, the more you're going to be able to really understand how to make those marks. For example, Let's see how we did. Here's a ruler. Make the marks fast and accurate. That right there is one inch. That right there is three inches. And that right there is six and a half. And it was shooting for six. So that one was wrong. But that's what accuracy is about. Accuracy is about understanding the feel of different distances. And that's what we want to work on. We want to get proficient at our skill set. This is the equivalent of wrapping your hands before a fight. If you wrap your hands wrong, you're going to have problems down the stretch. If you put your socks on wrong and you're stopping and starting, you're going to have blisters on your feet by the end of the fight. It's not about practice making perfect. As my former boxing coach, Jesse, used to say, it's about perfect practice. And this is about perfect practice. So we're going to take a look at some of this stuff in practice now where I'm working on a page from my comic book that's currently funding on Indiegogo, as of this recording anyway, Nosfero the Crypt Walker. You can check it out. The link is in the description. So watch me at work. Brush, water, palette, keeping my hand on that side, mixing my colors on the right side because that is where I want to keep things as a right-handed artist. Once it comes time to application, watch me tip that page. So that I get the angle that I'm after, I'm going to move my hand in the direction it is trained to move in. And as I want to turn things, I'm going to move that page so that I can get that nice, graceful brush stroke. And that is what we're after. So remember when you're working, perfect practice. Rotating that paper, not rotating your wrist. And even when you see little intricate details in my work, it all comes out of that core principle of making sure that you're keeping that arc of your line and those marks where you need them to be. So if you enjoyed this content, if you want to see more of it, make a donation by clicking on the super thanks. Keep working hard and remember, perfect practice. Take care.